Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the Lead X Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Hey, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy 2019. I know our podcast sessions have been sort of start and stop lately. I've been trying to give everybody uh, who, who works on them a break and let us focus on some other things. But it is January 1st and I am in my basement office. and I just wanted to record a few thoughts, specifically how I go about my end of year review and my planning and my mantra for the new year. And I always find, you know, New Year's Eve and and New Year's resolutions kind of goofy because, you know, it is just an artificial construct. We can make our goals at any time of the year. We should be doing our reviews throughout the year. But I'm no different. There is just something about the year, the time of year. Maybe it's the end of the holidays or something that it just you get in the mood to take stock and make new plans. And hey, you know, we probably need to do it much more frequently. So even if this is your annual reminder to do it, I think that's great. Now, many of you know that I actually don't do New Year's resolutions. I don't do official goals. I've evolved a bit. I'm not saying that uh, I've evolved that I'm better than you if you're doing goal setting or New Year's resolutions. I was big on them, uh, but I've just changed a little bit. I, you know, I found with goals, I've talked about in other episodes, so I won't go deep, but they are super powerful. I mean, they are like magic on earth and goals have achieved, uh, helped me to achieve a lot, but they've also helped me blow up a lot of other areas of my life that I did not have goals set up for. So if you're doing goals, you know, I'd recommend uh, do a few that, that counterbalance each other in all the areas of your life. And I, just as I've gotten older, I'm caring more about you know, less about achieving and more about being, I guess, and not always feeling like I have to chase something. But regardless, you know, I do have a mantra for the year, which which I will explain, you know, uh, in in a couple of minutes. This year for 2019, my mantra is one million, one mile, one meal. But before I talk about the mantra, you know, what I've been more and more interested in is not about setting a goal for the future year, But spending the time to look back at the previous year, I think, you know, that's part of the problem with the whole goal setting stuff. It's forward looking and we're not pausing to say, well, what just happened? Like, what could we do better? Or let's just enjoy and remember the great stuff and our our accomplishments. So I just wanted to share my approach. And what I did was I started with the new year. I, I grabbed a new notebook. You know, I still I've written about that as one of the 15 secrets. I still use a paper based notebook. I still have Evernote. I do some things on my phone, but there is just something about pen in hand, writing on paper, you know, slowing down the brain, getting emotionally in touch with whatever you're writing, if you're journaling and sort of leaving an easy to find uh, legacy, you know, for your kids or others in the future. Maybe they'll know how to hack into my phone and my Evernote and all that and see my stuff. But I know they'll be able to come into my office and I'm looking now at a shelf of, I don't know, 20 leather bound journals that, you know, I've I've kept over the years. So anyway, you know, I started with a new uh, brand new notebook. And the first thing I did was I flipped through last year's notebooks. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of just, you know, reminiscing a little bit, but I'm also then looking for like motivational quotes or quotes from books or things that I've jotted down from listening to podcasts that I want, I don't want to forget. And sometimes I just sort of leave them in and I dog ear the page, bend the page over. And if I go over to my bookshelves, I'd be able to find these, these quotes. But sometimes I like to, to take the, the notes that I found and want to keep and I rewrite them in the back of my new notebook. So they're with me again. And the rewriting kind of you know, reinforces them. And I won't go through all of them, but I just flipped back to look. And, you know, there were just little statements that uh, I I liked, and I don't have the sources for all of these, but like your mission needs to be bigger than your fears and doubts. Make your future bigger than your past. Um, A management tip. Is it a standard or is it a suggestion? Because standards have consequences. And I'm not sure our team members always know whether we're suggesting something or letting them know it's the standard. 
I love the art of storytelling. I think it's a really powerful skill. And it was late last year that I discovered Andy Stanley's book. I'm forgetting the, the title, but he has a story structure he calls Me, We, God, You, We. And I jotted down some notes on that. But then the other thing I do is, you know, I just go through and I look at my calendar. And remember, I believe in living from your calendar. No lists. It's all in the calendar. And this is another advantage, you know, to do lists, you throw them away or whatever, and they're kind of lost. Everything goes in the calendar, makes it really easy to see what you did or didn't do in the prior year. And so in my new notebook, I just write down the months, January, February, March, and then I'd write down like the highlights, uh, memories, milestones, anything like that month to month. And it's just sort of fun to reminisce and to jot those down. And then it's framing my mind to think about this upcoming year. And as I look at my list now, again, I won't go through all of it. I mean, there's some highlights like when Gary and Lucas joined LeadX and they're just great guys. I'm blessed to know them as as friends and they just have been game changers you know, with the company. But there's experiences like me going to the Chinese Lantern Festival, uh, a couple of weeks in Hawaii with my kids. Uh, going to a Sixers game and, you know, courtside seats with Owen. And I think I only went to one Sixers game all year, but it, it did stick out. And similar to this monthly review, I then have another page where I do a plus minus column, one, a plus column and a minus column. And again, like I now I'm thinking about like, what what are the things that gave me positive energy that I really were highlights? And some were things like the Sixers game, uh, the Hawaii trip, things you would expect. But when I really thought about it and looked at my calendar, some of the great things that gave me energy were some of the podcast interviews where I got to talk on air and off air with some of my professional heroes. You know, I spoke to Ken Blanchard and John Maxwell and uh, Stephen M. R. Covey. And I wouldn't have normally have brought those guys up if someone said, oh, we're the highlights of 2018. But with the calendar review, I realized that I, I was really pumped up, you know, talking to these guys and like there was an after effect, at least for a few days or a week afterwards. And similarly, you know, I often I, I like going out to eat. I don't really have a lot of hobbies, but I do like to eat well and try to invite friends out. And many of the highlights of the year were when, you know, my college friend, uh, Sandy, who I hadn't seen in literally decades, came into town and we got to spend some time together. Uh, another friend, Jenny, who I hadn't actually you know, seen in person for probably 10 years, just went out to dinner with her. Just some of these catching up with people that I had lost touch with make my highlight reel. And so, you know, what's the purpose of this kind of review? It's to know what to do more of. I mean, for me, I'm now proactively thinking about like, OK, who's on my interview wish list for 2019? Like, let me come up with 10 names and reach out to them and maybe I'll get two or three. You know, who else have I lost touch with? You know, who was I close with in college 30 years ago who maybe I could track down and, you know, have a meal with? You know, I, I had such a great time uh, at the Sixers game with my son. You know, let me do two of them or three of them this year. You know, let me just increase that stuff. And there's also, you'll see on my social media feeds, a lot of times I'll say it's not so much about a, a to-do list or a New Year's resolution, I'm gonna start doing this. It's also a to-don't list or a stop list. And these annual reviews can help you to understand some of that as well. And you know, it's like one of my failures, one of the negatives is that I missed most of my workouts. I mean, and that continues to be my struggle. You know, and as you know, in a second year business startup, you know, you're working a million hours and those things were falling off and I need to recommit to making that just a part of my daily life. And while like Hawaii was the highlights reel in a good way, it also made my negative list because I was the one, uh, I was the chump that ended up planning it all. <laughs> and I'm a little busy uh, also doing other things. And so I just remember the stress of in time and it was just not fun like trying to put together you know this epic trip before we left and then being the guy with the agenda and the phone numbers and the day-to-day -day stuff once we were there uh, it really sucked and uh like i do not have positive overall like feelings about my own experience in hawaii and so you know that's an easy fix though i mean it's it's something that like i need to recognize looking back so that whatever the big fun vacation is going to be in 2019, 
get someone else to, to plan it, you know, either share the load or hire a planner to get it done. Same thing on site, either just don't overpack so many things to do that you have to worry about and schedule and call people up or let let someone else, you know, get an assistant who can do that or check in with you day to day. So it's just little things like that. So, you know, we've not even spoken about the resolutions or in my case, a mantra, but this I think is actually more valuable. You know, if you keep a notebook, if you keep a journal, if you keep a diary, read it like page to page and then jot down any lessons learned or, or key takeaways that you want to remember that you want to carry forward as a lesson into the new year go month to month and write down the highlights and the milestones of each month, do a positive, do a negative review, and then just think about, all right, how do I do more of that fun, good, energizing stuff? How do I do better or learn from those negative things? I need to cut some people out of my life, for example. And then, you know, I, again, uh, it's not exactly a goal, but I, I have, you know, what I would more likely call like a mantra, like, thinking, you know, every day, one million, one mile, one mindful meal. So what does that mean? Uh, you know, a mantra is just a, a reminder. And to me, so the one million has to do with the business, LeadX, and getting to that mythic one million of uh, annual recurring revenue, one million ARR, which is kind of a magic milestone for any tech startup. You know, we, we just came out of stealth mode a couple of months ago. So now it's, you know, the march to one million ARR. And once you get there, then it's, it's sort of like, okay, you're gonna survive, you know, it's gonna work, uh, and your valuation changes and a whole, whole lot of stuff. But like, unlike a goal, I don't have a specific date tied to it. And that's intentional because again, the 30 year old version of me definitely would have. And the 30 year old version of me probably would have hit that goal, but it would have blown up something else. And so I know for me, the 1 million ARR look, I'd like it to happen by the end of 2019. Like one year is about like in my mind, but that's not a specific date or deadline. I hope it happens faster. If it takes longer, it takes longer. But what's valuable about that is it goes back to that most important task. I get asked that question every single week from readers. At any point in the morning when I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do with my MIT time, now I do it ahead of time, but like any time where there's a free pocket of time, I literally ask that question, what can I do right now or in the next 30 minutes or what can I do today that would make the biggest impact on getting to 1 million ARR? And so it just focuses me and the team and everything else because there's always a lot of stuff we'd rather be doing, like it's more fun to me to write articles and blog posts or whatever it is, but right now that's not what the, the business needs. One million, one mile, one mindful meal. So one mile is just to remind me uh, and to try to commit to running a, a, a mile on the treadmill every day. Now, why one mile? And for most of you, I hope, you know, that's probably like, wow, that's so small. You know, like only a mile? Like, Kevin, you're, you're a slacker. And the reality is the reasons why I say one mile is, first of all, yeah, I, I am horribly out of shape. Uh, like, I've been sitting behind a desk for 30 years. And I can jog a mile, but like I am not in good shape. It's been a long time since I've been jogging. But the real reason is because it's that idea of like an anchor habit will help you to form other little habits around it. And it's also that idea of how you beat your future self. You beat procrastination with doing something small. So like if you even let's say it's what could be even smaller than run one mile. What if it's like, you know, I will always lace up my sneakers and get on the treadmill for 10 seconds. Well, like if you're truly committed to that and, you know, you don't want to get out of bed or you're feeling sick or you're tired or whatever it is, you're like, all right, fine. I ain't running today, but I, I will put my sneakers on and get on for 10 seconds. I can do that. Anybody can do that. But what you find is you do that and you're already on the treadmill. It's 10 seconds. Like, all right, well, I'll just walk for the minute. And then it's a minute and you're warmed up and you're awake and you're like, all right, I bet I could do five minutes. And it grows. And so for me, that's what one mile means. One million, one mile, one meal. One mile just means get on that treadmill. You can run, I mean, you can walk, uh, you could speed walk a, a mile in 15 minutes. You can run a mile in 10 minutes. So you can't use time as an excuse. And the reality for me is that I never get on the treadmill, even for a mile, without stretching out. So I'm doing probably 
15 minutes minimum of like yoga stretches. I got a whole yoga routine before I get on the treadmill. But if I didn't say I'm going to go on that treadmill, I might forget to do the yoga stretches. And once I'm on the treadmill, you know, I'm not going to just run that mile. I'm going to probably warm up and, you know, speed walk for five minutes. So I'm warming up a little bit more. I'm getting the blood flowing. I'm burning a few calories, not many. And then I do the mile. And of course, what happens at the end of the mile? Well, now I feel good. So I'm going to go a mile and a half. Or I'm going to go two or I'm going to walk for two more miles. I think it's more about committing to the minimum than striving for the maximum. One million, one mile, one meal. So what's this one meal all about? Well, similarly, it's just the shorthand reminder for me, you can call it a goal if you want, of strive to eat one meal a day mindfully. You know, not not um, standing over the kitchen sink, wolfing it down while listening to a podcast and returning emails, you know. And I feel that, again, if you slow down and truly eat mindfully, you're going to eat less food. You're going to enjoy it much more. Eating itself can be meditation. You know, there's the classic meditation, but then there's eating meditation. There's walking meditation. You can become present and meditative no matter what you are doing. So this is sort of forcing me to at least get one once a day, a type of meditation. And then the reality is, if I'm doing this for one meal, it becomes a habit. I will start eating more with intent. And uh, it's, it's about what I'm choosing to eat. And it might mean, hey, I want to eat these nachos. But if I'm eating it because like, hey, all right, I'm slowing down enough to realize I'm stressed out and it's going to make me feel better. Or I quote unquote deserve it. You know, I'm celebrating. I had a great day. Okay, fine, but then truly enjoy it, you know, one nacho chip at a time instead of just wolfing it down while doing something else. And all of a sudden you've consumed, you know, 3000 calories in a minute and are like, oh, wow, I didn't even enjoy that. So that's that's really it. One million, one mile, one meal is sort of my mantra for the year, looking at wealth and and health primarily as the two areas to try to get more consistent on a daily basis. You know, I someday maybe I'll write a book about this, but like increasingly, I just believe it's not about those crazy long term plans. It's about doing just a few things consistently, you know, treat every day as game day, maybe give yourself one day off. But every day is game day. Schedule it out. Like, what are your values? Have you scheduled time for your values? Are you living the day the way you want to live your life? It's not something that you can plan for later. You know, if you want to be healthy, if you've got a health goal, make it a daily habit, make it a daily activity, not I will hit the gym once a week or on the weekends or lose weight. Okay, how are you going to lose that weight? Figure out what you're going to do every day towards that goal. Anyway, so this is a little different. I'm going to bail out because we're hitting about 20 minutes. I need to get some other work done. And that's it. I hope you have an amazing year. I hope you'll send me an email at kevin at leadx.org, L-E-A-D-X dot O-R-G. Tell me, what are your New Year's resolutions? What are your goals? What were the highlights and or lowlights of 2018? I would love to know. Talk to you soon.